In this tutorial, we'll discuss in more in depth about how to use the puppeteering controls. So to get started, let's go up to script. Notice now that we are on the stage and we have no script for our character. So today I'm just going to use a simple script that is already installed into my, my crazy talk and I'm just going to use asking for a date. But I want to point out one thing to you. Even before we enter into our crazy talk script and before we even add animation, notice that our character is already animating. These are the idle settings that we have for our character. Now, I recommend that before you start using the puppeteering panel and start puppeteering your character to actually turn off the idle settings that way you won't be confused with which kind of animation you're adding into your character. Remember, idle settings actually will not display on our character except in spaces that are between our crazy talk scripts. Notice that when we have multiple scripts on our stage that there is sometimes space between, our, between each script. That is because whenever we have one script ending and then there's a space, the idle settings will take over. But notice that when this new script starts, the idle settings will stop and the animation, which for this script is none, will begin. So when we are using the puppeteering guide, I recommend actually to turn off the idle settings. So to do so, go to model, then go to the idle settings, and then just click this little box here, deselect it, and now our idle settings will be turned off as we use the puppeteering guide. So after we load that script in, let's go ahead and enter that script and open up the puppeteering panel. Let's take a look at the layout of the panel. On the top left is the puppet profiles, which have five personalities of wicked, goofy, youthful, attractive, and grumpy. Each puppet profile has six full face controls under that panel, which are more or less emotion types of that particular selected personality. So notice the differences as I choose the puppet profile using the 1 through 5 hotkeys and then use the QWERTY keys, Q-W-E-R-T-Y, to change the full face control of the emotion type for the puppet profile. Each face control has different features of the face selected, but notice, if I select youthful puppet profile with the general full face control, it is unique in that when I choose the attractive puppet profile with the general full face control, you can see the features are unique to that puppet profile as well. So you can select between many puppet profiles and full face controls to create a template for animating a particular emotion for your character. So for instance, we can choose wicked face profile, then press the hotkey W to choose the smiley full face control, and move our mouse down and we can create a wicked smile. But if we press the number 3, the hotkey for youthful profile, then press W to create a youthful smiley full face control, and then move our mouse below our character again, we can create a childish grin. Also, another example is when using, say, Goofy Profile, and then press E for a full face control for Angry, and you will be able to control the jawbone to create an angry, jaw-dropping face of disbelief like saying, I can't believe you said that type of face. But, if we choose Grumpy and press E for the angry full face control, you'll only control the edges of the mouth to make a frown face or more of a disgusted face. So make sure you play around with all the puppet profiles and play with all the full face controls to find that right emotion for your characters. Another way to use puppeteering is to create your own custom animation by using a method called layering. To do layering, you can select individual facial muscles, for instance, eyebrows, and then press record. Then after we've finished recording, deselect the eyebrows, select a different feature, and record over the previously recorded segment to blend those animations or layer the animations together. But where to begin with layering? The suggested procedure, though it's really up to you, is to start with head movement, then followed by eyebrow movement and blinking, then followed by emotions such as using the cheekbones, the mouth, the lips, then after that is jawbone, then the camera. So let's go through each really quickly. To record, we simply click on the record button, and when we're ready, we just press the space bar. As we move our mouse around, you will notice the head movement of the character will move in turn. When we finish recording, look at all the keys we have created. A word of caution, when layering puppeteering, we will end up making thousands of keys. If you wish to limit the number of keys, click on the setting button, and a small menu will pop up. Here we can control the number of keys, as you can see, it is already set low, but if I change the setting closer to accurate, then record again, I'll try to move my mouse slowly, just like in the last recording, just slight movements. Notice I created a ton more keys, 
which again is okay, but later if I wish to edit this clip, I'll have to sort through all those thousands of keys. I recommend the setting around the middle, but a little closer to accurate. That way there's enough keys to have an accurate animation, but at the same time, not so many keys that I end up getting lost while fine tuning. So back to layering. When controlling the eyebrows, we are really controlling the emotions of amazement, disbelief, fear, and excitement. We can also click our mouse to create blinking. The next time you have a chat with your friend, pay close attention to their eyes and eyebrows. You'll notice that they will use their eyes to emphasize a point. Then you can better create facial animation for your crazy talk projects. Next we can add in emotions. By doing this, we can animate the cheeks, nose, mouth to create smiles, frowns, quivering lips, smooches, all kinds of actions and emotions. We can grab the whole nose to wrinkle the nose in disgust. Grab the cheeks to make your character smile or frown. Just like with the eyes and eyebrows, the mouth area has a huge effect on expressing emotions. Pay close attention to your friend's mouth the next time you have a chat with them. You can select the lips and make the lips either kiss or bite their own lips. Grab the area around the lips to create small grins or frowns. Move the mouse to the upper left or right to create smirks. Next is jawbone, but only if you want to enhance the lip sync created for your script or to offset the jaw with slight adjustments. The last step is camera. With puppeteering we can control either pan or zoom or both. You can use zoom to enhance the script by moving the camera back and forth while your character is speaking. Now that we are finished, check out the macros. The macros have built-in scripts. For instance, if I wanted to control the eyebrows, notice the difference between selecting the facial feature and moving my mouse in a circular motion, as opposed to selecting the macro and doing the same thing. Notice as I move the mouse around in a circle, the left and right eyebrow will move independently of each other. Another cool macro is the one on the forehead. As I move my mouse up and down, I can create a face of empathy, or when I move the mouse down, I will create a face of anger. So for review, the recommended order for when doing puppeteer layering is head movement, eyebrow, blinks, emotions such as nose, mouth, and cheeks, followed by jawbone, and then the camera with zoom and pan. And that is how we can do puppeteering in Crazy Talk 6. Good luck and have fun.